think we're good. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Just a couple minutes late here. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, in terms of uh, meeting logistics, so if you're joining us remotely, if you would change your name to your first and last name so I can refer to you properly. Uh, when you speak, if you would start by saying your name and then where you live. Uh, we recommend that you keep your comments to two minutes or less. Donna over here will uh, help us with that. Um, and keep your comments germane to the topic. If you want to be, a, um, if you would like to speak, you just need to uh, be called on me before you speak. So uh, just make sure that you do that. Um, so we don't normally get into a, like a, a back and forth kind of uh, comments here. <coughs> Excuse me. Check, check. <laughs> I don't know. Weird. You don't have like a mute button on your, oh wait, now it's gone. Okay. That was weird. Okay, thank you. I was like, I didn't touch anything. Oh, wow. Okay, super. Check, 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 check. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to keep going. All uh, right, uh, and uh, yeah, okay, I think that is it. So the first thing is to review and approve the agenda. Uh, I don't have any information about changing the agenda. Uh, we are m mainly uh, focusing tonight on the strategic plan update. <laughs> oh no. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. It's okay. Yep. Yes, everything has been pushed down. If you want to come look, that would be awesome. Somebody wants to help. Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. That is weird. Check. Curious. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> um, I am going to keep going. Okay. Any information about changing the agenda? No? Okay. So with that, I'm, we're going to consider the agenda approved. <laughs> and yeah, you don't have to be on Zoom. If, I mean, I'm. <laughs> oh, it's like still going. Oh my gosh, that is so crazy. The, that is wild. Sorry. Okay. So general business and appearances. So this is an opportunity for any member of the public to <laughs> address the council on any topic that is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Okay, okay, we gotta focus. All right, <coughs> general business and appearances. And it's an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on any topics that, that is otherwise not on our agenda. <coughs> so, um, uh, don't have a lot of folks here. So, if there are folks online who would like to address the council, now is the opportunity. Um, I see you, Peter Kelman. Go ahead. Hi, Peter Kelman, Montpelier resident. Um, I, I've got five questions, um, and I, I, I realize 
that we have staffing shortages and technology ghosts <laughs> um, all hitting uh, at the same time. And I, I don't intend these questions to be a criticism of anyone. I think we've got some structural issues that we have to attend to. So I'm just going to list the questions and uh, I'm not asked, I'm not looking for answers right now, but I hope there will be some answers at some point. The first is for Connor, restroom committee. Um, what is the um, status of it? Are you seeking stakeholder type membership? And when will it be scheduled? No need to answer that right now. Second, um, city, uh, city council members, have you been given and have you read Beth Burgess's report entitled Washington County Continuum of Care Homelessness Research Report, which was completed in May and was paid for largely, if not entirely, by the city, uh, by your assignment. Third, uh, Bill, have you, in fact, signed a contract with Parker Associates to work on the next report that needs to be done? Fourth, I don't know how many of you may or may not be aware, but uh, Su Sustainable Montpelier Coalition uh, is no longer employing the two people who uh, were coordinating CAN, and that has put CAN pretty much um, uh, in chaos. Um, I hope that somebody will look into that, and if they are not able to fulfill their MOU, um, I hope that you'll be looking for some other ways to do it. I got some ideas. Uh, fifth, and finally, guys, I was in the ed tech business for 25 years. And I can tell you that the website is on life support, not just the website, but uh, notifications, agendas, and minutes. They're, it's impossible. And it's not going to get any better. And it seems that the, uh, the, the the city is using Front Porch Forum and Facebook as a workaround. And that's, that's, that's not right. Many of us don't use Facebook. On principle, they're destroying our country. Never mind. And I, I don't know about it, the rest of you, but I don't have time to wade through Front Porch Forum looking for things that might be useful. So we need to do something. I suggested during the budget uh, meetings that the amount of money that was being put in the budget was not sufficient because you cannot stick with the current platform. The current platform was created in something like 1990. It doesn't work anymore. What is the plan? What is the plan to move on to a 21st century um, uh, a platform for the city? Uh, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll get back to him on those. Okay, great. Yeah, we have the answers for pretty much all of that. Okay, thank you. Um, are you going to respond to him personally, or is that going to be we'll in put, the we'll report? Put that, I'll, I'll, I will put it in the weekly memo, okay. and I will send them to Peter personally. Okay. With the exception of the restroom committee, because I don't know what's up with that. I, I think at the last meeting, we asked to put that out again, right. so. Yeah, so seeking can, members. Right. Okay, so seeking members. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, see, sorry, not seeking. I think we're going to have an initial meeting first there, oh, okay. just there. See how how big we want to make the committee, but yeah, I'd be ready to roll on that anytime. Great, uh, excellent. Um, anyone else for general business and appearances? Uh, yes, Bill, go ahead. Thanks. I, I was going to this at the end of the meeting, but given uh, the comments that were just made and also just the way our meeting started, I just wanted to let people know that um, we're having qu quite a confluence of, of things happening. As you know, we've got a lot of outages. Um, We've got uh, our key admin assistant uh, out on maternity leave, although her fill-in Shannon has been doing a great job. Uh, our our former assistant city manager uh, just left, and I am happy to announce the appointment of our new assistant city manager, Kelly Murphy, as of today. Um, so that's very exciting. However, she's just learning how to use this stuff. And um, in on top of all of that, as you can see from Kelly and my masks, we are both recovering from COVID, as is a huge amount of people in City Hall uh, and in among city employment. It's kind of blowing right through us right now. We actually just put out a, a notice tonight um, telling people, you know, just be aware that 
you, you, you may have some delays dealing with city government. And if you choose to wear masks coming to city hall, that's fine because there's a lot happening in here. Um, everyone is quarantining as they should, uh, but we're just at a kind of a confluence of a lot of uh, different things going on. So we do know that there have been some drops and some misses uh, and we are doing our best to get caught up on all of those. Uh, and we apologize to anyone who is inconvenienced by any of that, but uh, we'll get there. Hopefully everyone will be healthy pretty soon and we'll be fully staffed sometime soon. Great. Thank you. Um, anyone else, either with us uh, in person or virtually? Okay. All right. So uh, with that, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, is there a motion? I move the consent agenda, although I will, will have one comment. Okay. Okay. Motion and a second. Discussion. Jack, go ahead. On item G, on the handout for item G, the extension of the uh, uh, contract purchase date on uh, Berlin Pond, the recommended action shows extending it from 10 one to 4 one and that should be corrected to 23. Thank you. Donna, go ahead. It's just an error which I... I spoke to Bill about earlier since when we did the executive session and came out that really came from Bill and not uh, the city clerk. And it has to do with the motion to come out of executive session appears bef after the motion was made when we came out of executive session. So it's just a placement. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Just reversing the order. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of items in the consent agenda this week. Uh, any further comments? Okay, so since these are sort of uh, superficial kinds of changes, I don't think we need to necessarily have uh, like a motion to change things, but just with the understanding. So your motion um, is with these changes. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, Donna. Glad we bought the extension on Berlin Pond. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Great. you. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. Uh, great. So we are ready to move into our uh, discussion on strategic planning. And for this, before we get going. I think we um, we're going to take some public comment or see if there's yes. unless you'd want to you, unless you'd like to start um, and so then I'm going to be setting up anyway. Okay. So I think we're going to do it right here is the best yeah, way to figure that's out. Fine. Um, so yeah. So if you want to take public comment while I am setting up, that'd be great. Great. So uh, because this is one item, uh, the strategic planning update. We, we're going to take all the public comment right now, and this will not be the last time that we will see this item. Um, so th there will be more opportunity for uh, the public to comment, and uh, we absolutely welcome that. Uh, but for now, we're going to take public comment at this point and then um, and then go into our, our discussion as a, as a council. So... Um, if you have a comment now is a, a good time for that. And so Linda Berger, I see you have your hand up. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm from District 1, I think. Um, anyway, um, I noticed two omissions in the strategic plan specific to the waste, the water resource recovery facility um, that fit into the three goal areas of goal four, practice environmental stewardship, goal five, build and maintain sustainable infrastructure, and goal six, improve public health and safety. The first omission I noticed is the completion of um, and compliance with the new wastewater discharge permit, which replaces the current permit that expires on 9-30-22. The second is to complete the goal and steps in the Vermont DEC's notice of alleged violation for air pollution. This includes addressing the items cited in the pre preliminary engineering report for the, the wastewater recovery facility phase two project. 
And in addition, due to our small valley location, <clears throat> the, the effects of inversion complicates controlling odors from the facility. But the DEC has reminded us that the city is responsible for co um, controlling air pollution despite atmospheric conditions. Thank you. Um, so I just want to make sure that I am understanding your comment. Um, so these are emissions uh, that, so the, the, like the items that you mentioned are things that should go somewhere in the strategic plan. That's what I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Um, fair enough. Any other comments uh, from the, from anybody either in person or online? Thank you. Just to that note, those, uh, she's absolutely right. Those are, those are really good activities, specific activities under the goal. Um, and we'll be sure to note those. I mean, they're obviously high on our list because of their requirements, but um, it always makes sense to or specifically articulate those. So yeah. we'll, we'll be sure those get put in under the work plan. Um, so let me think we're ready to go here. Apologize. Yeah, I'm so. Oh, sorry. You're right. You're still taking comment. Well, I, I don't see anybody else, but I just want to double check. You know, nobody else has a comment to make at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to turn it over to you, Bill. Great, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. So um, sorry if I'm a little bit uh, spacey. Like I said, we're still kind of uh, finding finding my way. Uh, the plan tonight is I'm, I'm probably going to go over uh, verbally. You're going to have to listen to me for a little bit, and then we will turn it over to you. And the idea would be to, uh, well, I'll explain it when we get there. We'll just leave it at that. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do tonight is go over just strategic planning in general, remind you what we're doing, uh, give you a quick progress update on our existing plan, talk about some of the current challenges and work in progress, give you some very broad highlights of the citizen survey results. We just got the first preliminary results this morning and I sent them out. Um, there's quite a deep dive. We'll be getting more analysis. And I think at the next meeting, we can go into those. Bill, can I interrupt you real quick? Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh, this, this. Oh, sorry, I saw it up there. Oh, wait a minute, hold it. How does I, how does one, you know, help. I'm already in this. How do I share my screen? I'm already in the, oh, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks. We'll make it. All right. Thank you for that. Okay, now am I not advancing? Oh. Why is that? Any idea why I'm not advancing my slides? Oh, there we go. Now I am. The computer will do. Okay. Taking it from the top. Take two. Uh, what I'm going to try to go over with you tonight is um, just a, an overview of what strategic planning is. What, and I know many of you have heard this before, but just to remind you and the public what we're trying to do. A brief progress update on the existing plan uh, and reminder that we did adopt a two-year plan. So we're in the middle of a two-year plan. Current and challenges and works in progress. Uh, highlights of the citizen survey results. As I was saying, um, we just got the first results this morning and uh, we're expecting a more complete analysis of that. So uh, on our next agenda, we'll put the, more, the deeper dive. Um, but in the meantime, um, a lot of interesting information there. And then we'll go to your discussion and review of the strategic plan, what you want to change, what you'd like, or at least the beginning of that conversation to set us up for next year. So you know, will proof uh, is is what it says now. Where you still want to be? Are there things you'd like to reprioritize? Are there uh, new ideas? Those sorts of things. So it'll take a little while to get there, but you will get plenty of time to to talk. 
So just a uh, reminder to start with the Athenian oath. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just the last uh, paragraph reminds us to transmit the city uh, not only less, but greater and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. And I think that is the duty of us as the city servants. Uh, and this has guided many municipal people over the years. So why do strategic planning? Uh, who fills key roles? What is it? What's the product? How's the process done? Um, basically, I know why I'm getting uh, these things. Hold on. There. Um, this is from Stephen Covey, The Four Quadrants. Uh, and as you can see, there's the urgent and important and not urgent and, and uh, not important. We tend to spend a lot of our times on the urgent and important or urgent but not important things that kind of have to be done. And as a city council at a policy making board, we really need to make sure we're trying to spend our time in the not urgent but important. So the planning and the, the doing, the first two quadrants. So this helps us sort out uh, how the council should be spending their time. And the reason we do that is, you know, you really only meet as a group in council meetings about 125 hours a year, roughly. Uh, so, it's, you know, that's three work weeks. So when you think about all you're trying to take on as a group, you're trying to do it in three work weeks a year. So you got to use these, you know, even those nights we're here till 10 or 11, that's still only four or five hours. Like that's all we have to, to do this work. So what, what are the most important things we can be doing during those times? And as you know, other things come up that can take a lot of time, even if they aren't uh, a quadrant two or even a quadrant one. Focus on the important leadership issues. Where, where do we want to be going? And then providing clarity. Um, one of the most important things since you're a policy making board is providing clarity to those of us on staff and to the public about where we're headed and what to expect. Even you know if it's something people don't like, at least if it's clear, they can understand it. Um, this is basically just a, an iceberg, but I, I show it because what you as the council deal with is sort of the top, what's above the surface. Those are the issues that people are talking about. Those are the policy issues that show up in your agenda. Everything beneath that iceberg is all the functioning of what's going on, all the services being delivered, all of the, you know, the citizens calling in, the different activities that are happening, as well as your plans being implemented. So I think it's important to remember that um, while you are the visible tip of the iceberg, uh, you're, you're sort of anchoring or holding, uh, guiding the rest of it. So what are everyone's rules? There are you know, three main rules that when we think about making decisions in organizations, one is who is the external deciding authority, who's providing vision and, and, and you know, what's the capacity. So in our case, our, our role, external authorities might be our state and federal governments who provide uh, either funding or uh, statutory or legal authority. Our voters, residents, taxpayers, businesses who approve our various uh, proposals. And if you're a staff person or even a resident and you need something, it could be the mayor and city council who are, are external. For, for you, they're not, but for me, you are and our staff. So depending where you sit, your external authority can be a little bit different. Vision is provided by the mayor and city council, uh, ideally, is obviously, is and, and city manager and staff. So we bring ideas to you. But at the end, really, it's your role to either provide or approve the vision for, for the city. And then ultimately, the capacity, of course, is the city manager, the staff, the volunteers. We're the ones who, who get things done uh, for you. And so all of those things are important. And the more those things are aligned, the more effective we are. So a good example of this, I always use this one, is snow plowing. Um, the vision of, of the, the mayor, the city council, the community, everybody is that we ought to plow snow in the winter. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Um, therefore, we get money in the budget to plow snow we have we have uh you know citizens support that and we have enough trucks we have enough people we have salt sand we have the capacity so that is completely aligned there are other things of course where we might we might think it's a good idea but we don't have the ability to deal with or the the law doesn't allow us to deal with it so as we as you the council and we the staff think about things as like you know are we where do we need to focus is it on Getting people to agree with our vision? Is it developing capacity? Is it advocating for authority from our own voters or our external sources? So just taking a quick look, you know, who are these people? They, uh, the, the voters, the residents, they uh, elect city officials, they vote on budgets, they engage in local discussions, 
they are our external authority. They're, they're interesting in that they are owners because they are stakeholders, but they're also customers. Uh, that's not always, you know, when you think of a business, you're usually one or the other. But in this case, uh, you know, as owners, they may have some controversy over what they'd like to see happen versus customers. They just have complaints over sort of how something happened. So there is a there is a difference. Um, the mayor and city council, of course, you established the visiting policy values and goals. You, the budget is your biggest policy. How do you collect and spend uh, the public's money? Regulations. How do you enact you uh, regulations to enact the the vision and values? Fiscal oversight, overseeing your staff, making sure it's happening, and you're addressing controversy. Uh, complaints, you know, well, we'll talk about that, but you know the controversy is really a values issue. What should we be doing in our community? And so when your owners have controversy, it's really up to the elected officials to address to to sort of sort through the controversy. And then at the end of the day, the council speaks with one voice. You're, you are a particularly good council at this, but um, you can debate. You have different votes, but once once that vote is cast, that is uh, that is the voice, and that's how I will communicate to members of the public or our staff. People say, "Well, I heard so and so say this. I heard so and so say, yeah, but the vote was this. This is this is what the council as a group said." The city manager and, and by extension the staff. Uh, we implement the council's policy. We recommend policy to the council and provide uh, advice and information to the council. Uh, I'm the chief administrator of the officer of the city. So hire, fire, supervise, manage all of the operations in the city. Deal with constituent services and address complaints. And I think that's, a, you know, to make the distinction between controversy and complaints. If someone's complaining about service, pass it to us. We'll, we'll take care of that if they're if it's a controversy over a policy, then that's that's in your your realm. And then, uh, in my case, follow the ICMA code of ethics, which I also try to insist on with um, all of our staff. I'd be happy to go through that some other time. And again, we are the capacity for the vision and the authority. So policy decisions, where we again, we were you want to spend your time um, showing a plane, because policy is really like choosing your destination. Choosing your arrival time and choosing the cost. So you want to take a flight, right? I want to go someplace, but I don't really want to pay for first class. I want to take the long way. Um, you know, you kind of have to make it all work. Once you do that, you don't sort of tell the pilot how to fly the plane or all those other things. You just, you've set your policy of where you want to go. So if you think about this, you know, here you are, you're setting your person, per, you know, you can kind of look at this chart, right? Your your purpose and vision is way up there. And as you slowly come down, you get down to the day-to-day -day work, which is landing the plane. And if you look at the little chart on the bottom, you can see the council's role is really heavy at those early items. And then the, the staff is really heavy at the end. And in, in the middle is where we interact to, to come up with these things. So nice little visual to think about uh, landing the plane uh, and getting to where we want to go. Another another quick visual, we use most of these terms. I don't know if we use all of them, but again, it's starting with the vision, working our way down through. And so those, just as uh, Linda Berger just mentioned, you know, we have a goal for environmental policy, a strategy for uh, improving the wastewater plant. And so in and among those projects and initiatives are those specific uh, needs that need to be addressed. <clears throat> So we're going to come back to these at, at the end, but I wanted to go through uh, where we're at now. So this is what you all have said is your vision. Now, I want to be clear. This is aspirational. This is not a statement of what exists now. This is a statement of what we would like to see for our city. I suppose I think we chose to word it in present tense. We could say Montpelier will be an engaged, but for whatever. So this is what we've said, that we are an engaged and growing city with a population that reflects cultural and economic diversity. City balances being the hub for businesses, arts, outdoor recreation, and other cultural events with ensuring that there are strong municipal services, environmental protections, a variety of housing and support services for all. So this was, in, in, until you change it, is the council's vision for the community. And so all of our policies and practices ought to you know, somehow stem from these and be at least not inconsistent <laughs> at the least, then certainly consistent with, these, with that vision. 
And then the specific mission of us as a, as a government is to be a leader in the state by providing excellent municipal services that align with, align with community priorities through proactive communication and public engagement. So that was what you all thought was uh, what we do as a city government and what we should be striving to do. And then we said some core values. So for the city government, you said the dignity of worth of all people is recognized and respected. The city government will be transparent and accountable. All city activities will be conducted in a highly ethical manner. Innovation is encouraged and rewarded. Diversity, equity, and inclusion in the organization and community are essential. Climate change is real and proper preparation must be made. The city will be financially responsible with public money. City employees are respected, treated fairly, and recognized for their commitment to the community. So those are core values that you established as, again, backdrops for how we conduct ourselves. And um, so, again, I'm going to come back to all of these and check in with you to see if these all still resonate with you and if they're all still where you want to be. But for now, this is what you said. In addition to yours, our, our staff has also, in, a few years ago, adopted some internal values for our organization. We call it our CRAFT, um, because you got to have a good acronym. So com competence and caring, respect and responsiveness, accountability, fairness, and teamwork are things that our, our admin administrative group, in addition to the values you've adopted, which we all um, buy into. So our goals, these are our current goals. You see these listed each week in your weekly report. You see them in your, your various things. This is, uh, if you went to our website, this is what you would see. Uh, improve community prosperity provide responsible and engaged government, create more housing, practice good environmental stewardship, build and maintain sustainable infrastructure and improve public health and safety. As you know, there are specific strategies within each of those goals and then specific projects and initiatives that relate to those and then staff projects and things that go further to, with that. And you helped prioritize all of those and you help choose these as the top, top goals of the community. So strategies, um, and this is really more of an explanation of what they are, not a list of our strategies. So if those are goals, for example, uh, strategies are policies, plans, or ideas which will implement the goals. And so if, if, for example, if the goal was to reduce homelessness, a strategies might be to build more housing, to build more home, homeless shelters, to improve social services. The, the, these are just for instances, these are, but that's, those are examples of strategies that you could use. So then you would have initiative and actions. Assuming you adopted those, then you have your goal, improve homelessness. You've got your strategy, say it's to build more housing. Now you'd have specific things. Our initiative would be we're going to build 100 new affordable units within five years. Now we're getting more specific. And then we say, and an action would be, okay, we're going to contract with Downstreet to build 30 by 2025. We're going to donate a parcel of land. We're going to apply for a CDBG grant in 2022. So those then become very specific actions. To, to meet the initiative. So that is kind of how this, the plan rolls out. And I think, you know, as we talked earlier, we're really wanting the council to focus on those goals, strategies, and then have us respond to you with some initiative and actions. And then you can tell us if we're on the right track. No, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. We're gonna appropriate money too. So the, the whole idea of this is uh, what's needed for success. Do we need, like we talked about, do we need capacity? To do this, do we need approval from somebody? Who's responsible for getting it done? What's the timeline? If you notice, most of these have, have a date on them um, because now they're becoming a more specific action. And then again, the staff builds in the initial activities at the bottom of the iceberg. And the end, end product was we have a strategic plan. So we have a transparent document. It's uh, the goals and priorities are stated. The strategic strategies are articulated. Um, it all ties in. Uh, and it provides clear direction to staff and the public. This is this is what we want. This is this is what we stand for. This is what we're doing. So, again, uh, you did a lot of this work the last several years. The plan we have now has really been a product of your work. And um, the plan we're in now is supposed to be a two-year plan, but with a one-year check-in. And so, this is where we're at. So, with the process, quick do's and don'ts, and then I will stop talking about this part of it. Uh, it's organized group decision making. So we set priorities. Everything can't go on the list. This is always the hardest part, I think, for council members and staff people and all of us as individuals, right? We all want everything 
Um, Got to start with the vision and goals first. You know, as Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. Uh, so don't, you know, we don't just say, well, we want to fix this sidewalk. Okay, well, maybe we do, but what's the point? We want to have a more walkable community. What's the, what are we trying to accomplish? Don't fight every battle and don't waste the time telling the pilot how to fly the plane. Spend more time on where the plane's going, how much it's, we're willing to spend to get there and how much time we want to take getting there. So here's a little progress update on the existing plan. You all have received a very complete uh, document with all the, you know, our, our Invisio. So I'm not, I will not walk through all of that. Sure, that makes you all very happy. Um, here's just some of the key highlights. Under the improved community prosperity, we acquired 203 Country Club Road. That will come up a, a couple of times because it includes housing, outdoor rec, community, and child care. Uh, that was a major initiative for this year. We have uh, we are contracting for an action plan for the homelessness task force that's underway. Uh, that was a high priority. Under provide responsible and engaged government, the, the website project is underway. We've added a communications position. We've got the community stipends implemented. We've hired a facilities and sustainability director, and we've just completed the community survey, which we'll be hearing more about. Creating more housing. Again, we purchased the Elks Club. We funded the housing trust fund, and we reconstituted the housing committee. And good environmental stewardship. We are working with uh, Casella and DEC for PFAS treatment. We've acquired Berlin uh, Pond land for a conservation, and we'll be buying more in within the next six months. And we're developing Confluence Park. We're imp implementing the net zero plan, including hiring the sustainability director and developing a stormwater utility. Build and maintain sustainable infrastructure. Again, recreation infrastructure at the Elks Club, East State Street major project uh, that's getting ready to go out to bid and should be under construction next year. The WRRF, uh, the wastewater plant phase two project. We've already talked about that a couple of times tonight. Uh, that's getting funded and going forward. We've used ARPA funds for backlog projects. And I think many people have seen that uh, with some of the road paving projects and various things that are happening around town, getting caught up on a couple of years of neglect when we had to cut our budgets. And then we got approvals on the budget, uh, on the ballot for some other projects, the Barry Main in intersection, street lighting, et cetera. So we are um, making forward progress on, on infrastructure. Improving public health and safety. Again, the action plan for homelessness. We contributed $100,000 for the new sh uh, shelter in Berlin. We're implementing the crisis intervention training program. We are uh, actively involved in uh, developing a regional communications infrastructure with some of our neighboring communities for public safety. And we're addressing staff shortages, which is uh, has emerged as a huge issue, which was not uh, so when we set this plan. So, so what are our, our current challenges as we go forward? It's good to take note of these things. Uh, one, staffing shortages. I think the number one message I was given to share with you all is um, we really are not sure how much more we can take on with what we've got going. Uh, and we're going to go through some of those. So uh, to, as you think about adding projects to, to perhaps think about taking things away or maybe sticking with um, some policy work and, and letting us complete the project. So that was our, our message, not to dampen your enthusiasm, but just uh, to be realistic. And we expect a tight budget. Um, as you know, we've already had to make some wage adjustments. Um, our, we're expecting health insurance to go up. Inflation in general is driving things up. And the federal money that we had um, this past year, we won't have. So uh, I think things will be um, more difficult next year or this in, in a month or two, <laughs> actually. Uh, so those are those are the challenges. And just briefly, things that are on our list. Uh, some of them I've already mentioned, but these are active projects. Uh, the, you know, the huge one, of course, is the Elks Club. Uh, the wastewater plant, also a huge one. The East State Street stormwater utility. We're, as part of that, we're also looking at our water and sewer rates. We've got the street lighting, the Barry Main Intersection, Confluence Park, the communications infrastructure, the homelessness district heat. We're trying to, uh, you know, get a good grasp on implementing the net zero plan, ADA improvements. We need to do a capital needs assessment of, of all of our buildings, those kind of things, the website upgrade, and of course the city plan, which the planning commission has been working on and which will actually be um, a major piece of work for the council next summer when it comes to you and you have to spend time going through those chapters. So um, I know it may not be on your radar now, but it's, it's coming. Uh, so, 
With that said, we did get our preliminary results um, from our Polco survey. So what I, all I did, um, and as I said, there's a lot there. I just pulled out those. Uh, so we were benchmarked with other communities that have taken the same survey between four and 14,000 population, 4,000 and 14,000 population. So there are about 265 or 270 communities that had that. And they gave us a benchmark. We either rated lower, our residents rated us lower in certain areas than the, the big benchmark or higher. And so I'm just, I just pulled out where we were lower and where we were higher. So you could have that as a backdrop from the, for this uh, conversation. Um, my personal observation was that um, you as a council are pretty much in sync with your residents as far as those areas. So uh, it didn't, it wasn't a huge surprise, but as you can see, quality of infrastructure, cost of living, uh, we were much lower. Ease of public parking, uh, of course, well-planned residential growth, a variety of housing options, much lower. Affordable housing, much lower. Uh, quality of new development, of, uh, availability of affordable quality childcare and preschool. And you have childcare on your list, which is one of the goals for the Elks Club project. Economic development, street repair, much lower. Garbage collection, which isn't really something we do. Yard waste to pick up, also not really one of our core functions. Recreation centers or facilities, uh, we are ranked lower. So these are all areas that I think the council has flagged as concerns. And um, it looks like our residents generally agree with that. Uh, where we were higher than the, the benchmarks are Montpelier is a place to visit. Um, I thought this was really great here. The residents' connection and engagement with their community. We hear a lot about people saying, you know, we need to improve our community engagement. And of course we do. Um, however, our residents already rank us higher than our benchmark in, in that area. The vibrancy of downtown, ease of walking, our historic and cultural character, availability of walks and walking paths and walking trail arts, uh, opportunities to participate in community matters. Again, people feel like um, they can, whoops, sorry, they can participate. Did I just screw something up? Of course I did. Oh, no. Uh, I'll, I'll get this. All right, here we go. We're almost done, too. That's the sad part. All right that I shouldn't have. Maybe this is a quick review. This is your last chance to cram before the quiz. We're not sharing? Oh, no. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You know what I think I'm going to do since we are almost done? So, uh, excuse me, the other, uh, the, the areas that we were ranked higher were, again, opportunities to participate in community matters. Um, people watched a local public meeting. They reported that they watched a public meeting higher than um, people reported that in other communities. Interestingly, attended a public meeting was about the same. So we have we have a high um, ratings. The carpooling, biking, and our uh, walking or biking and our public library services. Obviously, there's a lot more to unpack. And one of the things we will get um, once we get the full report is then uh, some of the parsing by demographic data. So how these are res responded to by different groups within the community. Uh, and that is still coming. But overall, this was these were the areas. Uh, and and is if you've if you've had a chance to look at it, it obviously goes through services and it, there's much more than this. But I thought these were the, in terms of our strategic planning, this is kind of a where our our community says you're doing well, and here's where our community says you need improvement. Uh, so that seemed to be a good place to start. So basically, now it brings us down to your part. And what I thought we would do is. Um, basically walk through the plan and see, you know, where you want to 
if you want to revisit any of these things and where you'd like to start your conversations. So, you know, we check in on the vision, the mission, the values, the goals, and, uh, and I would, I would suspect the goal strategies initiatives is where we really want to spend our time. But, um, if any of it needs to be changed, this is the time to, to do this or at least start talking about it. So um, I don't know whether it's easier to put the lights up and just have the conversation you all have that the, those things should all be in front of you. All the, the vision, mission and values are all in the document that was sent out or we can do it with me here, whatever you'd like. I'm, I'm here at your pleasure. Carrie, go ahead. Thanks. Um, and I just have a question about our process here. Yep. So um, this is a two-year strategic plan. You said so. It's 2022 and 2023. Mm -hmm. Fiscal years or calendar years? Fiscal years. Well, yeah, fiscal years. We It's set up to go by fiscal year, but if anything, yeah, that's a great question. So, so, so <laughs> the, the plan itself in Invisio is set up to be a fiscal year plan. Um, so that's why you got the year-end report, the June 30 report. We do it about now. It obviously then informs our budget process. And then we check in when after election to make sure it's still where that then council uh, wants to be. And then we and then we finish out the year. So it is fiscal year, I'd say. Okay, so this plan will end the June 30th, 2023. The first half of it has already ended. So now we're starting the second half. And yes, you would. this is your chance to alter it, even though we're already a quarter of the way into it. We could still make changes to it for this next year. And you can change the length. It was really, you know, when we set a two-year plan, I don't think it was meant to be like specifically ending on a set date. It was like, this is our two-year horizon. So you can really set those dates however you want. Sorry to be squishy on that. <laughs> Just it is still feeling a little squishy. What what the task before us right now mm -hmm. is? So, so at some point we need to develop our next st strategic plan. Um, are we doing that? Are we starting so that process now? So what you're doing now is saying, um, are we? Does all of this still make sense? Are there tweaks we want to make to our plan? And then presumably next year we would almost start from scratch and do the whole process from the beginning but if but you you can do that now if you don't like I mean the council can always change its priorities so I think that's so I'm sorry if I wasn't 100% clear on that but so yeah we would it's it's a check-in and but it's also you know some things have been accomplished and what are, you know a, a council shouldn't be expected to just sit for two years and not come up with any new ideas so I think it's it's that's this is the opportunity especially going into budget to say here's what's important to us here's the areas we'd like to add here's areas of concern this was a big deal a couple of years ago now it's not uh, or you know this is now higher um, and then next year we would do a more facilitated process like we've done in the past where you know you put the dots up and all of that kind of thing and if I can also jump in I, I feel like in the past we've also not made plans that were two years long um, you know feeling like we couldn't obligate a future council to our right um, you know to our goal so the the trade-off is that you know if we're gonna have a two-year plan we're at least gonna have a mid mid-year check-in or part part of through check-in like it's is this still true do, do we right. still want these things and I think, you know, to, to that end, I mean, <laughs> obviously, it, 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 a lot of this work takes more than one, one year or nine months. So I think the idea was, look, we're looking out ahead a couple of years, obviously can change as councils change. But that our goal is assuming most of us will be around for a couple of years. This is the direction we're heading, uh, knowing that it you know we're going to be faced with new things you know when we sat here last year doing this we didn't know we would be having the kind of staff shortages we have now for example or the, you know the type of inflation that we're, we're having now so um so you know, obviously things change um so 
have at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, go ahead. Is, um, is, does staff have a list of recommendations where it's like, okay, we're having a, a wee bit of trouble hitting the target here because we're so understaffed or? I think the staff's recommendations is that we have, you know, we kind of went through the, I, I highlighted the list. I think in your packet you have a more detailed list of all the, the projects. I think what the staff is saying is in terms of projects and sort of those kind of things, we're kind of at max. Um, obviously, if there's policy issues you want to take on and discuss and, and set, then, then that makes sense. I think they would ask you not to add a lot of new uh, sort of those kinds of things uh, unless we're going to take some things off. Um, but that said, if something's urgent, you know, something's really important and needs to be done, then we, we would take a look at that. But I think the, the combination of just the, the workload that we have already just from the current plan and having less people and some of the, the changeover we're having right now. So let's see. we're having difficulty. I think we're having difficulty delivering some of the basic services right now. And um, and nobody likes to be there. You know, we're all, we all take pride in our work, and we want to be able to do what what we do really well. And and so to to dilute that even further, you know, when by adding this is all important work. I'm not trying to take away from any of this, um, but I would just urge you not to pile on to this unless you take away. But uh, in terms of yeah actual project type things not to say at the same time let's have your ideas <laughs> we'll come back to you at the next meeting if we have real you know if we have feedback too so okay. uh, Lauren. Uh, one thing just some people have noted you're still sharing your screen if we oh well I, I yeah oh, oh, because I, I, I can take that off I, I, I left up the vision because I was going to make I wanted to go through and see but see I don't need to leave like that if, if people don't want it um, but no, I, well, I think it's probably useful. Yeah. Okay. So. As long as it's um, intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it's intentional. Great. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I think we can go through this just process-wise. It feels like it would be easier to be seeing a version that's, like, kind of cleaned up with projects that are done or, like, see a proposal that's, like, where are we? Um, as opposed to a kind of mishmash of like updates and uh, like I think it's been incredibly helpful to read and reminds us how much has been going on and um, which is exciting to see it all. Um, but like a next iteration of this, um, I mean, it also there's a lot of redundancy. I wonder if there's a way to just like so reference like things that are described. They don't need to be described like three times because right. many things we do. Ha a accomplish many goals that we have for the city so so the the goal of the report should be is intended to be a progress report um i left mine up there um but uh so uh, you know the, the real detailed one the the so um and obviously i didn't want to go through all of that uh in which is i tried to list some of, of the big the big accomplishments and the big still pending items uh, obviously, we've got some roads paved, and we've purchased some properties, and we've uh, approved. Uh, you know, I think one of the things we did was move a lot of things forward this year, including you know approving a lot of projects, and now they got to get done. We talked about East State Street. We talked about all the road things. Those are major pieces of work. The wastewater plant. Those are those are huge things. And you you know, to your credit, you brought them all forward, and they got approved. And now they have to happen. So we wouldn't want to add another bunch of those on top of that. I think is the is the idea there. Carrie. Yeah, so along those same lines, I'm looking at the um, one of the reports, I don't know, the executive report that's got the graphics in mm -hmm. it, and you have these categories of on track, some disruption, major disruption. And so I'm wondering if, if you, um, what would be helpful to me, I think, and, and it, maybe it's in here and I didn't quite get it, is like some, some assessment from the staff about the ones that are experiencing some disruption and major disruption, what, what would be needed to get us through to those? Or, and do you in some cases have recommendations that the disruption is so major that we really need to put this into the discontinued or you know, on hold space? Okay. Yeah, so we can do that. We can certainly do that for the next meeting. We actually do, you know, we check in quarterly 
or on these and we go through those and see you know sometimes it's we're waiting for an ex you know something else that we can't do anything about otherwise it's some it, you know there could be any number of reasons some are surmountable some aren't mm -hmm. so that would be yes we can do that we, we will do that I think at this point yeah I so so I guess where I'm I guess what we're asking for tonight is is the is the basic underpinnings of the plan still resonate with you and if you know what are the ideas that you have for things that you'd like to at least have on the council's agenda for this year we'd lay those out and then at the next meeting we'd come back with our responses and then any answers to the kind of questions and then we could the next meeting we'd spend sorting them out so this would be more of a you know what what would you like us to work on change i don't want you to you know either the vision is still okay or you'd like some changes but i don't want to think we should spend a lot of time trying to word it those kinds of things so just again to to clarify so we're going to talk about the vision do mission, we still like values. this we'll do mission do vision or we'll do values goals. and then we'll go so into the the goals and strategies are really the things yeah. of, of the meat of it and you'll walk us through that yes okay uh, Lauren one thought on the vision I I still like it overall um, maybe instead of saying a variety of housing we say affordable and available housing okay yeah Donna then Carrie no, go ahead. <laughs> I was liking the word diversity because it's not just affordable housing I mean we we need housing of all levels and so I, I liked having that bigger picture because it helps everybody move in wherever they're at in their life um, do you, is, is it okay if we have Lauren respond go ahead Lauren. Yeah. yeah I guess to me it's like affordable at all levels of income I wasn't thinking of just but I mean I know it's kind of like a term of art affordable housing so um, capital A yeah we can think of how to I I just think variety only gets at one aspect and doesn't get at more but I mean we talk about housing a lot in the plan too so I'll think about that okay. I'll see if I can come up with a better okay. wording <laughs> um, Carrie <coughs> I'm still a little hung up on process I apologize okay, no, um, to me a huge part of the appeal of a two-year strategic plan is that we don't have to revisit the the basics of it um, if I mean, we can, we can always change it if we want to, but so I am inclined to, um, to not want to make a lot of changes to things so, like vision So let me be clear, that's a perfectly fine answer. I probably yeah. should have said okay. at the beginning, <laughs> if you all want to go through this and say we're good with this, that makes everybody's life a, a lot easier. I, I guess I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't say that. Um, I wanted, I wanted to be sure that it didn't appear that I or the staff was trying to hijack your ability to make changes and lead your vision so um, I was probably being more deferential to that than I need to if, if people are comfortable with where things are great um, and and that makes this process go smoother so so I apologize um, yeah I'm pretty comfortable with some of these broader things I think we could maybe just cut to the meat of it you know if there's yep. new things we need to do I think to take off the plate Mike. sorry about that Usually very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, can, I, I apologize. Can you say it again? I was distracted. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm just inclined to agree with Carrie rather than like sort of wordsmith and the vision and so, sort of these broader things. I, I think we did spend a lot of good, like quality time shaping these. And uh, what are the urgent matters at hand that we need to either take off the plate or add on? I, okay. A Jack. Thanks. As I was reading over this, getting ready for this, I was I was thinking that there's really we've taken on a lot in this uh, plan, and we've we've there's like two categories of things that are uh, that we're discussing, and and one of them is categories that the council has essentially already decided we wanted to do. We've already told Bill and city staff to do them, and it's still a lot of work, but it's not anything that we're going to have to spend a lot of council time on. For instance, you know, Peter Kelman uh, commented earlier 
Well, the, the web page is terrible, communication is terrible, and, and we real, it's really important for the city to address that. And I completely agree with that. But we've already decided to do that. We've decided, well, we're going to hire this, someone to, to redesign and rebuild and, and fix the web page. And so I don't think here at City Council we're going to spend a lot of time talking about needing to fix the web page. On the other hand, there are things that are still real policy and implementation issues, like some of the housing stuff. We know we want to develop housing. We still are working on figuring out how we're going to do that. And uh, you know, we've appointed the housing committee, which is also working on how we're going to do that. But we're still not at the level where we can, we can say, well, we, we know what we want to do. Bill, you and your staff just go do it. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe that's a better way of putting that is, is kind of if you assume that the work list is the work list, you know, how do you want to spend your 125 hours this next year? What what are the issues that are the most important that you want that are policy issues that you want to be talking about out of these lists or any if there's something new? I think that's, a good, that's probably what I was trying to say in a less artful way. <laughs> I mean, I'll just put it out there, too. I have no interest in adding anything <laughs> um, to the list. Um, so it sound, sounds like there's a, not a lot of interest in, I'm seeing a lot of agreement that there's not interest in adding things to the list. So the question, I think, is, you know, you, you raised some good points that maybe we should really be focusing on the things that are either stuck or um, we're not making progress on that either need to come off or... Um, Or uh, you know the the word that comes to mind, a phrase that we use a lot in the education world is like put it in the parking lot. Like, let's, we're just gonna we're gonna put it on the list for some other time when we have more time and capacity. Um, so, so I jumped ahead to our goals. So I, I appreciate all of that. Yeah. Um, and if those are still the things that resonate, um, or if people want to revisit any of the key goals. Just to check, no other comments about the vision. We're all okay with the vision. Yeah, okay, kinda great, awesome. I whipped past the vision, yep. mission, and values. It didn't seem like that. Well, I did have one comment oh. about the values. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Of course. Um, the climate change one. It's, no, it's just just this one. It's just right, but it's because it's a value. It's not a. This is not the goal level. So, but it's, I was wondering if there's any language within that that would fit there for you. But yeah, I think so. I mean, you could do it however you want. Um, I think when we did this a year or so ago, the the idea was that basically to say we as a city adopt. You know, we we acknowledge that this is real and people have to do things about it. And then, mm -hmm. in our specific work plan and project it was you know so that would be a, a thing we're mm -hmm. going to reduce our so we would have a goal we're going to reduce our greenhouse gas and then here's right. projects of how we're going to do that I, f I feel like in the environmental world the the word preparation in association Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Sure. That's that's fair. That's a broader beautiful term. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> that's so it. Yeah. That's yeah, right. There we go. There we go. Well, you know, I mean, these, I, I you know, uh, some of it is just words and it's thing, but you know, this is what we put out for the public and people that are, you know, potentially moving to the community or looking at and and. 
people can say this is what this community or their elected officials stand for. So you want it to say what you want it to say. Mm -hmm. That's important. Um, cool. Just uh, moving on to the goals. Uh, these have been our goals now, uh, although I think a year or two ago we had, you know, obviously put in an emergency one about COVID, which we then, in, you know, we, we then reinstituted into the other goals. Um, you know, I, I don't think from a staff level we see anything different than that emerging. And if you look at what our citizens just told us, our residents just told us that infrastructure and housing were really the two biggest problems they saw and that um, you know they liked our engagement and they liked the environmental aspects of the community <laughs> and clearly improving prosperity and need is, is, is a key thing so I and public health and safety is kind of what we do in local government so thoughts um, like, so the question is do we want to change any of yeah these? or revisit any of Yeah, done. Then we finally got down to six. We had, remember, we had like nine or five, and we consolidated down, and it just really works for me. It's, it's good. Yes. When we redo this, I'm going to have a lot of thoughts about it, and but tonight <laughs> looks good. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll start a little earlier next year. <laughs> uh, okay. I think we're. Oh, Donna, go ahead. Yeah, so Oftentimes when we've had council retreats where we've had a, a full time with just ourselves and then with departments uh, heads, then this also comes out then. It's like a real working group where we're looking at a lot of different things that we're in a different mindset. It's like we're trying to throw everything away and then come back into it. I can't remember. I seem to think that was March, right after election? So April? <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we, we actually changed that. Uh, we used to do that, right? We used to do this goal setting in sort of April and adopt it in May the, with the new council and all of that. Uh, last year, we changed it at your request to now because the idea is that whatever we come up with in this process um, is directly related to what follows with the budget. So, um, you know, we, we would do it in March and, you know, the budget had just been passed. So we'd be talking about things that we couldn't even really attach any funds or make policy decisions about for at least six months. Uh, here it's kind of, you know, this is what's important. November, December, we come in and say, you just said this was important. Here's the funding for it or not. Um, you know, and then you can weigh the budget proposal against your, your priorities. So. The, the council and everyone chose to to move it to this time of year, so we could move it back if that's something that people want. But that this was a conscious decision that was made. Yeah, my point was the time of year. It was the, what I consider a lack of a, a real retreat. Right. I feel that at various times, as council has changed, at different times, those retreats really I felt were important mm -hmm. to get a handle on our differences and how we hear things differently and how we re react differently. And it led to a lot more understanding when somebody was saying something and you went, what? Or I was saying something and they were, I mean, I think it really gave a depth to our understanding of our differences as well as how similar we had goals. We had a lot of different thoughts how to get there. Mm -hmm. And I've missed that because we've made this goal so much more, what I'm gonna call a rational discussion <laughs> versus, you know, just, Getting down more in to how we feel behind things, and I miss that. So we can do that. Um, you know, again, I think s s uh, the the goal setting. So the re I think one of a couple of the retreats we had were actually more about sort of how how the group functions, and what are you know rules and how what what's important to everybody. And some of it did turn into goals, but then I know last. We, we, as you recall, we, uh, we had brought in a facilitator for the first couple times we did this, and then the last couple years, Cameron led it. Um, and now here you are stuck with me. And um, so, you know, we certainly could go back to getting, you know, more out external expertise. I mean, uh, you know, we, we may or may not have changes in this group come next year. So we may want to, you know, regroup and team build again with, with a new dynamic. I think, you know, this past year we only had, had one change. And I don't think people felt like there was a huge need to, to completely regroup, but that may, you know, as time goes on, sometimes that's important. So 
it's really up to you guys to do what you want to do. Great, but it was a very different retreat. Yeah. That's all. Well, it was. It was so I, I think. I feel like there's a lot of us who haven't had that experience right. together. Well, I, and I want to be clear. This is, you know, this is setting goals and priorities and strategic planning. It's not a retreat. So <laughs> I think if we, they could be the same, but it, it, yeah. And if that's what you'd like to do, we certainly can do that. Happy to. I'm putting it out there for an awareness that maybe people would be interested in doing it separately from this. I understand we have a timeline with this one. suggestion and it's so small I feel bad taking up any time saying it um, what's that that's the district heat well plan. that's what I, I was thinking that and I was like uh, somebody moving here isn't gonna know that fair enough Change icon. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I figured, like, I could tell you later, but then, like, is there council agreement? Whatever. Okay. So if we put a road, then is that going to is that going to be sure. cars driving with, with? I don't know. I don't know. I, I have faith that you'll find something. <laughs> sorry. Parking garage. The parking garage. There you go. Oh, dear. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Any other changes to the goals? Not for this year. Not, I'm told. not for right now. Okay. Now that we've got the icon set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now it's, it's really dialed. Right. Okay. <laughs> so to that, I guess to that and then our, our um, and this kind of goes to Jack's comments. I'm just going to go down here to the, actually, I'll, I'll just come out of this and we'll go, I'll stop sharing. Uh, or at least I'll, how do I stop sharing? Red, so where it says stop share, that's, <laughs> there you go, look at that. So I think we're at the point now where if those, if those are the goals, are there specific strategies that you wanna talk about that are really policy type strategies that we would wanna consider? Again, thinking in terms of um, how you wanna spend your time. What are the issues? Think about what you've, what you've spent your time on the last year, some of which were driven by you, a lot of what was driven by this process last year, but a lot wasn't. You know, some things come from other groups, some things, you know, get put on the agenda and you end up spending a lot of time on things that aren't necessarily your top priority issues. So how do, how do you make sure you're getting the time to address what you want to address? So, you know, think about those goals. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so for example improving community prosperity are there specific you know sort of topic policy areas you'd like to and at this point you're not voting you're just listing them all out kind of getting them out there and then we will you know we'll, we'll try to prioritize them at our next meeting Yes, Carrie, go ahead. Um, so this document the, um, that I'm looking at, the uh, executive report, so the, um, where I see goal and it says progress, so, so for instance, goal one, improve community prosperity and progress 30%, and then we have the strategies, and then listed under that, that's the updates that staff has provided, right? Like what's happened with each of these strategies? And some of them have, some strategies have activities and some don't, is that right? How, excuse me, what? I just I'm just trying to get a sense of the structure of it. So some, st there are activ activities under some strategies, but not under all of them. Right, because some, yeah. And the activity, so the strategies and the activities are set in the strategic plan. Unless they've been completed, yes. Uh, or you want to change them. Okay. I think I think at this point, the idea would be, you know, what under the areas of community, you know, for example, our, our main topics were, you know, support economic development and promote outdoor economic development, actively support, you know, child care options, implement new economic development plans, determine level of, of provision of social, <coughs> excuse me, social services. Those were sort of the four main points 
that you said. And so I guess, you know, are those still resonating or are there other things that you think should fall into that category? Then we can try filling in, you know, the specific things that would, would support your new ideas type thing. Or, you know, if you wanted to drop some of these things off. So, I mean, the, you know, is there something new and different under this area that you think we ought to be looking at? Or are there are things we, in there that... So are, are we looking specifically under improved community prosperity? Right that's now? the goal we're talking about right yeah, now. Right now, yeah. Okay. Um, so, you, like I said, you could either add new strategies or ideas. And in fact, at this point, you could just throw out ideas and we can sort of put them where they belong. Yeah. And for example, you know, we we spent you know a lot of time last year, we, we sort of talking about our level of provision of social services, and I don't think we ever you know we never really got that. At this point, we're really focused on dealing specifically with the, the you know the unhoused population and not social services in general. And you know maybe we really ought to focus just on dealing with the issues that he and his Connor knows. Um, that would be a suggestion, for example. Um. Mm -hmm. um, Donna, yeah, go I ahead. I just wanted to mention for two people watching, this is one of the attachments that was linked to the agenda, and it's under executive report, I believe, mm -hmm. that we're referring to right now. The other one was the update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any changes, well, suggestions? I'm looking at yes, the Connor, go ahead. So is the idea we just sort of throw something out yeah. and then we find out where it falls under rather yeah. than go through each oh, one? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess we, if you're yeah. okay with that. You can do that. Okay, yeah. I, I think I'd like to bring up one thing that maybe didn't rise to the level of urgency when we were doing strategic planning. But as I've spoken to folks, it, it seems like it's almost a crisis. Uh, and that, that's just the, the uh, rental prices are rising at an incredible rate here. And, you know, I've, I've spoken to so many people recently. And, uh, you know, like one woman who was like 80 years old comes to mind, lived in the place 20 years. She's disabled. Her rent was hiked up 33%. Mm. And it's like, you know, I, I have like five examples of this, people I know who have had to leave town because they can't afford the rental prices. You know, some of it's natural enough. Some of it's predatory, I think. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, what can my government do for me to, to help out with this? And, uh, you know, I, I don't totally know. I, you know, I, I know we're, we're sort of limited at the municipal level of what we can do in some cases here. Um, you know, we've thrown out rent stabilization, and that means different things to different people. Uh, but I, I, and I imagine the Housing Committee is going to tackle this, but it feels like, it, like it, it's necessary for us to have a statement explicitly telling them, you know, we would like to see all the options on the table to get this under control. Like, if I'm at a city council meeting, that's what I'd like to spend my time on, having different groups come up with ideas here that we can grasp onto and either create ordinances or propose charter changes around that. Uh, because, like, 33%, it's, it's untenable, you know. And, and these are good people, like, community-minded people who are losing as a result of that, and our seniors who are just being, like, you know, uh, put through the mill on this. So I, 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 maybe it's under housing. I, I just like to see it written somewhere, you know. Well, certainly the availability of affordable housing was a top, you know, one of the areas of concerns of our yeah. residents. It's, a, you know, it's keeping what you got as much as like, you know, finding new, new housing. Well, that's as good a process as any. Just throw out ideas that you think we ought to talk about and then we'll figure out where to put them. <laughs> it might be free the dam up a little bit instead mm -hmm. of we'll <laughs> uh, Jack. I, I think that's an excellent point, Connor. Another thing that is related to that is uh, is evictions and what we have seen uh, not only in Montpelier but around the state is uh, is people being evicted not because they're uh, not paying their rent not because they're uh, bad tenants who are damaging the property or uh, interfering with other tenants but just because the landlord thinks they can get somebody in who will pay more money so the same rapidly increasing rents and evictions for no cause are go hand in hand as a way that uh, really can drive people out of uh, out of their homes and so I know that's something we're going to be looking at in the housing 
uh, committee, and uh, I know there are people within the city who are working on it, and I think we should we should be looking at it at the council level too. So. Uh, is that sort of s similar to taking on something like Burlington's charter <coughs> amendment, just cause evictions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think that'd be really interesting, and especially if the housing uh, committee is going to be talking about that. It, it feels like it would make sense for them to talk about it before it comes here. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, Lauren. There's one thread that I, I'm trying to figure out how it would be reflected here. I'm just thinking about the different pots of federal money that are sitting at the state. Like there's this unique opportunity in the next few years for us to do projects that might not have been on the next three year plan. You know, like I'm, I'm struggling like knowing how the, the staffing capacity issues and like how what would we move around and how do we, we would be able to pull it off? Um, but it just feels like we should be doing everything we can to take advantage of federal funds that are either just going to get sent back to the federal government or um, like everything I'm hearing is like the projects that are ready to move, they're just going to like pour money in. There's differences in eligibility, different guidance coming down. So it might all of a sudden be like, all of a sudden there's money available for this instead of that. And I, I just like, how are we being as prepared as possible to do things that are going to it's not changing these goals. Like I really like, I think they are the right set of initiatives and stuff. So, you know, but I could see us losing out on opportunities um, or like I want it reflected that we should take as much advantage um, as we can, even if it means being nimble to changing, you know, doing something sooner and putting something else on hold because we can get federal funding to do it and not ask Montpelier taxpayers. Jack, go ahead. That's, I think that's a great point. I, I, that probably goes like in responsible engaged government or something like that to uh, increase our capacity to respond to opportunities as they arise. Some, something like that language, yeah. Yeah. Other things on folks' radar? Yeah, Donna, go ahead. Uh, are there shadows of ideas as possible what's going to be the rules, the regulations around those? Because you can't be prepared for everything. Uh, we, we've, got, we've done some prepping towards different types of housing, but do we need to have our lobbyist or whatever more directed their attention to find out what is the shadow ideas right now with that money? Was that a, qu a question? I mean, she's talking about she's hearing things. And yeah. I'm, okay. How do you go, find go out ahead. more about yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I, I think something like continuing a lobbying contract that would have a role of like assessing what that landscape is. Like, like a lot of the money's been allocated into different buckets. There's specific programs. You know, there's there's things like there's money sitting for multi-unit electric vehicle chargers, but it's not being spent. Nobody knows about it. So I just think there's like money sitting out there not being used and whether it's us making that more help, you know, partnering on projects as a city or even just letting residents know of things that, you know, landlords know that that's available. Or, um, and so I just, it's, it's hard to know what's out there. Like, so there's both specific pots of money that have been allocated and it's the guidance seems to be evolving. So some of that is moving around. Like we wanted to do whatever service, but we realize that we actually can't. And so then they're gonna be scrambling to move it. So um, the new legislature is gonna be <laughs> figuring out where to put that money instead. So it's just like a moving target right now to some, some of the money. So. Um, I just think staying on top of it, but it's going to be tricky, and we could just miss out on a lot of opportunities and some kind of investment to like try to track that and keep us posted on what those are. Could help us make sure we're aligning our priorities with what's available. Other other ideas. Yeah, so one uh, thing I would recommend, um, 
want to make sure you all is. I, I do think, and uh, this is sort of coming from the homelessness task force, but um, we could be facing a pretty serious situation come March uh, when the the hotel programs end and people are out. So I would think that we'd want to set some sort of priority for addressing immediate shelter needs and uh, you know obviously long-term housing is something that's going to take a lot longer I, I you know we've said over and over again that we we can't be the social service providers but there is, is a role and of course we're waiting to get a report uh, we, we have a, a project underway to give us recommendations for specific facilities or pro programs we might implement um, and we have some funds set aside from our ARPA money but uh, I would think I'm looking at this workforce development which really I think wasn't uh, just, uh, I, I don't think we had the ability to really do, and I might can s suggest we change that to really, you know, focus on immediate needs of unhoused population and providing shelter um, because I think that's going to be urgent. Uh, Jennifer, go ahead. Just in kind of tandem with that, um, as somebody who's worked in social services for over 20 years with the homeless across the country, um, I'm my concern is who who are the people that are going to work with this community because there's not a lot of social workers in Washington County and the ones that are here are getting burned out fast. And I know that it's something that a lot of folks have been talking about, like, yes, we need all these things and we need these structures and we need these programs, but who's going to work? Who's going to do the work? Everybody's tapped. And so I'm just wondering if you know, or if maybe you know, if there has been funds set aside for, you know, paying people what they should be paid <laughs> to do the work <coughs> and you know is there going to be enough positions um. yeah, yeah. you know like I, I think probably bill or i were going to talk about this at some point today but yeah we're we're in a crisis mode with the shelter this winter it's uh and you're you're asking the right question jennifer it's like who's going to do the bloody work you know we've got two uh, providers who have traditionally done that in good sam in another way and they both told us pretty clearly today look like we, we can't tell you we're going to do it, you know? Exactly. And, and even worse than that, like, if you throw money at us, we still might not be able to do it because we can't find people, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you, you know, I think we got into a, a pretty broad conversation today. To be honest, I'm not sure the Homelessness Task Force is quite equipped and nimble enough right. to deal with this uh, because, really, we just got to get something moving, like, right now. Exactly. Um, I like that, P I mean, Peter... Kelman today, I, th I think he's still on the call. He was he was highlighting the urgency of it, and you know, even if we don't agree on some of these solutions, we need like solutions on the table that yeah. we can pick one from. Absolutely. Uh, because people are going to die. You know, they're going to die if we don't come up with something. Exactly. And if that means like unstaffed like pods or something, hey, it's better than leaving people on the street. It's not ideal, or some other system. But um, I, I thought that was a pretty scary meeting today, and yeah. you know, I, I didn't hear a lot of concrete. Uh, uh, options on the table that we could jump on right now. So we, I, I think it's going to take the city, like staff, sitting down with some of these providers and, and getting some ideas on the board and mm -hmm. pulling the trigger on it. Yeah, the turnover has been a lot. And I, and I think that's something within the social work community is, that has been going on just for all of Washington right. County. Everybody's really panicked. And, so. and this kind of work isn't for someone who doesn't know what they're doing and able to respond that's it's it's a definitely a crisis situation so if the people that that are the professionals in the field can't deliver the goods you know i, I you know having a volunteer staff shelter is not you know it's not a recipe for success and it you know could be even more dangerous so yeah it, it, I, that's right where i was headed uh donna the jack Okay, Jack, go ahead. <laughs> well, Connor, is, uh, are unstaffed pods e even a possibility? I was talking to Rick DeAngelis the other day, and I know that Burlington was going to do the, one of these pod villages a year ago, and they, a city which, which has much more resources than Montpelier wasn't able to staff it last year. And my understanding is that uh, the companies that provide pods for this pod these pod housing clusters won't even let you have them unless you've got a whole plan for staffing mm. and services uh, for, yeah. for good reasons. And so, so, you know, toward that end, I mean, we could spend all night talking about this particular issue, I think, from the point of view of, 
of our priorities, I just would urge that that be, I think that ought to be on as a very high priority, you know, the immediate shelter and safety of people in need as well as, you know, working toward uh, longer term solutions. And there is no one, you know, I mean, housing will help some people, but not everybody. Uh, we, the state is basically saying we're out of money and not our problem. Uh, so uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. Yeah, and it's it's not uh, it's not immediately obvious what the solution is. You know, it's, right. it's not just a matter of you know opening. We, we had opening, like yeah. some of the best people like around at the table today, mm -hmm. and there wasn't a long list of solutions. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't mean yeah. we can't you nope. know, still talk about the solutions that are on the table, right. and um, and that is coming up in a agenda pretty soon but uh yeah we but i think the, the the scary issue like like connor said just to end this so we can move on is even if money were you know so basically what the state said is number one we're not sure we want to provide the funding number two if even if we do we want to, you, there has to be a day program you have to show that you have a day program which okay except you're okay with people freezing at night if there's no day program like it was kind of weird and then number three mm -hmm. which i think rick DeAngelis recommended or could understand was they were concerned that stretching good sam too thin would hurt their other programs mm -hmm. and i think that's legit and so basically the point was even if say the city came up with the money and said we'll pay for it there's there's still that you know, and that, that would eliminate the day program need because we don't have that requirement necessarily. It would still mean who's going to do it because it means it has to actually be physical trained bodies in the shelter that can handle the situation. So, uh, yeah, it's a real it's a real thing. But anyway, we could we could spend all night on that one topic. So, yeah, yeah right. Uh, Donna, go ahead. Well, I know this is more detail in the weeds, Bill. Sorry, but I'd like us not to forget. You know, I feel we need to knock at the governor's door and ask about that incentive of people moving here and work to attract people through incentives where we have shortages like social workers and that we, be, we make a lot of noise with the governor to make it happen here as a partnership with him. And likewise, we need to reach out to the educational institutions that they have people training in social work that could possibly work with senior social workers that are here. Um, and I'd like us to knock at doors like Vermont College has empty dorms. I'm sorry, but it's there. Um, and we have some empty buildings that we can repurpose. So I just don't want those to lose um, sight, even though we don't have clear paths to them somehow to get them on the table. So, so we're working towards that too. All of that was discussed. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. all of those issues were mm -hmm. included. What else? What are, the, what, are the, what are the brainstorms are out there? I know Carrie's got some. Well, um, again, small as it is, um, something that I think can maybe come Another off icon the icon change? What's that? Another icon change? Yeah, exactly. We changed these icons. I mean, it's, I, it does feel sort of s small and a little bit silly. I'm having a hard time finding it now, but... Um, somewhere on our list was um, make uh, more opportunities for tours of departments. And, you know, it's not that I don't think we should do that. I just don't think it needs to be a priority at this point, especially when folks are, um, under departments are understaffed right now. Okay. So what we can do... Um, so really what I wrote down was, you know, again, having to do with housing, so rental pricing and evictions, um, making sure we have the capacity to understand and access state and federal dollars for projects, homelessness issues, including advocacy, and then maybe knock off the, the tours. What we can do is take a stab at redrafting some of the plan with these in and our own recommendations from staff of what maybe could drop and come back to you at your next meeting and and if anybody thinks of anything else in the meantime um let us know you know one of the things that um is a little bit hard to know what to do with is so at the bottom of this document it has the section of um initiatives that are not 
necessarily priorities, but they're still on the departmental work <laughs> plans. I mean, those are things that and seem seem important and you know i i don't if, if and those are staff you don't need to worry about those. i was gonna say like if if staff feels like those are important things then i don't want to tell them that they're not no. <laughs> you know what i mean so um I'm, I'm assuming that's more of just like an fyi here are things no, that we're I think continuing we're, to work right. on okay and i i think uh, you know and and i apologize for not teeing this up a little bit better um any number of reasons but whatever um so as we th we'll come back to you with this next year but next week and at, i mean at the next meeting along with hopefully the more complete um uh survey and a few other things and then if you know if you want to give a little bit more thought to sort of key part policy issues that you really want to spend key council time on um that would that would be great things that we ought to spend time on yeah okay go ahead Thanks. I, I have a couple of other thoughts about housing that I don't see listed in here, and they may kind of be in here, but maybe not. Um, but one is that uh, I would be interested in doing an inventory or being in communication with uh, the owners of downtown buildings to see if there are spaces in the upper floors of some of the buildings that could be uh, converted into housing. Uh, and, and not just right downtown, but there are pla there, there are existing buildings that uh, that maybe have spaces where housing could be developed. And so, figure you know, it's probably a small enough number that uh, we could talk to all the owners individually and say, well, okay, what is it? What does your building look like, and what is it? What would it take to get you to? De develop housing in that uh, in that space. Um, similarly, you know, we were uh, the mayor was just on television last night talking about how uh, about the uh, city's use of uh, office space uh, or the state's use of office space downtown, and and they had I think good reasons for why it's it may not be feasible to convert those office spaces to. Uh, uh, to housing, but there there might be a follow-on effect to that, which is that if fewer people are uh, fewer city state employees are coming to downtown, they may need less parking, and so it may be possible to look at some of the uh, parking lots either. Uh, like behind the uh, state office uh, motor vehicles and those other office buildings or in the pit to see if some of that space which people have for years looked thought looked at that and thought well that would be an ideal place for housing and the states always says well we we're using that for our employees well maybe they're not using as much of it for employees so maybe the state could actually save some money by uh, releasing some of that and Create use that as an opportunity for housing, which would be uh, good for the future. And then one uh, one third thing, and I haven't admit I have not looked at the uh, at the zoning bylaw to see if this is uh, feasible. But years ago, decades ago, there was a ki kind of housing that. Most people, that a lot of people, upper and middle class people hated, which was SROs. And, you know, it, single room occupancy housing. And uh, it might be worth investigating whether um, that would be a way to uh, meet some of the need, you know, for people who are not in, not in families and maybe don't have a lot of money, but. Uh, could 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 meet some people's housing needs. So I just investigate that as a possibility. Go ahead. Um, this might be a question. Just wondering what's going on with the Vermont College of Fine Arts, and just as a change that's happened. Like, what what is there a role for the city in thinking about that space and? Or so. Not? We've asked that we be included, and um, 
White and Burke is doing their analysis, and of course we work with them as on the Elks Club and other projects. So I think there's some nice synergy there. As I understand it, they're doing kind of their due diligence work right now. You know, sort of assessing what the the market options are, what the costs are. You know, one of the one of the downsides for um, use of that that property for even for homelessness so like it is is that you know while there's all these dorms there are these old concrete dorms they're not really they're going to be extremely they either are going to have to be just torn down which i think would probably cause some backlash um or you know the or the cost of sort of internally renovating them is very high so you know what really is the market value and what what you know what kind of investment what have you made to con convert them so yes there's this campus yes they have a lot of house, you know units you know they have bathrooms at the end of the hallway they're not they're the old college dorm that some of us are old enough to have gone to and uh um so so there's there's problems with them as well but i know they're looking at all their options and we've asked that we be included in whatever you know public conversations they have uh, and i haven't heard back but we certainly i think can can fall into that similarly we had did have some conversations with the state just yesterday about uh, the use of state parking lots for various types of development and it's interesting um, they're not quite ready to commit that they will never have people back and never need their parking so uh, uh, but it's still a, a conversation worth having and we said well if you're going to bring them back bring them back because we could use them in downtown right i mean either either bring them back and pack the parking and we could use we could our stores could use them I, <laughs> so well we could use them <laughs> so anyway okay. anything else yeah other things I mean, just in terms of th things that I feel like we ought to be talking about, I know we sort of mentioned this uh, earlier, but you know, as much as we can be um, proactively uh, looking to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, um, that is, uh, that's a priority. Mm -hmm. um, so. We can state that even stronger. Yeah, in yeah, I mean, it's. I, it's in there, but we it's can in make there. it. But you know, just in terms of thinking about like, what, what do we want to spend our time talking about? That's something that would be on my list. Yeah, go ahead, Carrie. So this is, this is probably more of a topic for when we really get back into this, but um, I don't see anything about education in here. And is that because we're letting the school board take care of education or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have any say over education. Uh, they're the complete separate entity, yes. Unless there were like educational opportunities that were separate from this, right. uh, you know, but arguably yeah, in terms of K to twelve education and those right. kinds of things, I mean, that's really not our right. Like, arguably, childcare child care could right. be an overlap issue, and uh, you know, we do offer classes through the senior center um, right. or the community services department. So, but, um, but in general, yes, but, yeah, it's not not our lane. Yep, uh, Donna then Jack. So you mentioned education, and I went to training because I really think one of the things the city can do for the community along with social justice and restorative justice center is to actually incorporate training that's available to the community as well as the staff in the, the DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. It's a lot of training out there that's happening and I would like us to make it a, a more of a priority here mm -hmm. for us, for our staff, but also for the community. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lauren. Just oh, um, sorry. I think Jack. No, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, in, just um, we have at the Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee gotten several requests from some of the city committees, for example, for training, um, and we have been talking about staff training and how the city could be better supporting our own committees or the community in that. So I, I think getting that more clearly reflected would be great. Um, I'm not sure I see it here, but uh, one of the things that we we got in the budget and we got people to do uh, last year is to support the uh, the additional staff for the sustainable sustainability coordinator, and uh, and that person has been hired now, and so I would think at some point we'll want to have 
a discussion at our level about what that person's supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe, maybe that's already part of what, he, what he's doing since he got started, and, and it's going to come to us. But uh, Well, in all fairness, um, the, the individual has been identified, but we haven't really been able to get him fully engaged until we hired the replacement building inspector, and she starts Monday. So that, that will help be able to, you know, have that handoff. Uh, we, you know, I think there we have had some conversations with MIAC. Uh, the couple of members of MIAC were involved in the hiring process, and uh, obviously the net zero plan is the real basis for. So from from my perspective, and I, I think that would be great to have that that conversation. Is like how do we how do we implement that plan and go? You know, one of the pending requests we have is sort of what would it take to convert our our buildings to uh, you know net zero or off of fossil fuel by 2030 and we just need someone to do that work and I, you know i think that's going to be one of the first ones out of the box that this individual will do we've got we're still trying to decide on how to handle uh the, the heating at the the garage you know we had we'd planned to do it as pellets but we may now use the methane from the plant but either way it will no longer be fossil fuel so you know, a lot, implementing a lot of those projects is exactly what they'll be doing. But yes, it would be good to get a sense of the council schools along, and maybe have have MEAC attend as well, so that we're united on that. Yeah, I just think it's at least a part a <coughs> policy question, not just staffing and implementation question. going to keep coming up with ideas if we sit here, right? So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Other thoughts? Jack, go ahead. Um, I haven't read this in enough detail to uh, lately to know what it says, but uh, how is transportation addressed in this in this set of goals and uh, strategies and I think that that's just worth looking at you know we from stuff as simple as getting people out of out of cars to as much to the extent we can you know to figuring out if the uh, public transit is as uh, effective and responsive as it should be questions like that I think um, that's a great question the transportation in terms of as a single focus isn't really addressed but some you know so the net zero plan talks about vehicles and I think somewhere it's probably under also under the environmental sound what we talked about the the my ride uh, ride share program those kinds of things but um, it probably isn't and then of course the, the streets and roads and sidewalks are really under infrastructure but it, it would be good to at least think about transportation issues as a whole somehow Don. and we have demand management also it has to do with parking and transportation Correct. as well as the complete streets that we adopted right so it's there it just needs to be more prominent and well, and again, right, although, you know, I think those are good examples of the, we've made policy decisions about those, and so now I think, the, you know, the council doesn't necessarily have to spend a lot of time reiterating their policy decisions, and then it should, those should be showing up in project, you know, once you've adopted complete streets, then when you see projects, the whole idea is that that would then incorporate the complete streets policies, and so. <laughs> he is. Of course. One of the things that this brings to mind is something that we were doing for a while, and it has kind of slipped off our uh, our regular activities, which is that we're all on all these committees, and for a while, all the council members. One of the things we were trying to do was bring reports to the council of what's going on in the committees that uh, that we're working on and you know it doesn't go in this document but one of the things that i think would be useful for us is if we would get back to doing that so that 
all of us will have a, some sense of what's happening with, with the housing committee, with the homelessness task force, what's happening in the transportation infrastructure committee, just all that stuff. So we all have more of a sense of what's going on with the, with the whole city. Perfect use of council reports. <laughs> yeah. 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 Donna, go ahead. Earlier in the evening. <laughs> that's why I think we've had so f so mm -hmm. brief. We've had some, but very brief. And you're mm -hmm. really good at doing that, Donna. You really but it is, it is are diligent. We're so late at night to, yeah. to take the time to, to really get into detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Well, in the interest of not being late, is there anything else? <laughs> uh, Lauren. Just one thought more on process. Uh, so, it sounds like the staff will look and we'll get kind of an assessment of like if there's things that are on here that just seem untenable um, or whatever. I mean, one other thing that might be helpful um, from a staff perspective and knowing we might have some great new legislators, like if there's pieces where like really we need state policy. So as we develop our legislative mm -hmm. um, agenda and what we want to be pushing for and if we're going to invest resources in a lobbyist again like how is the state a better partner with us um, or that we're advocating for the kind of programs and support so that could just be like identifying like we think the state should be stepping up more on this we think this is hard you know just another question to be asking as you go through the strategic plan for the department right. and in, in the anticipation of the um, discussion on the legislative agenda we've already been asking people to think ab about that but certainly can be tied in with this but yeah i think the plan would be to take this we'll we'll go through it edit it add in some of your thoughts and come back with a draft <laughs> that you can approve in five minutes next meeting or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, I, so with that discussion of w are there things in this document that are stuck or not right, well, uh, that are untenable? I, I just want to recognize that well, that can be a really hard thing to, to do because it feels like everything is important, um, but that's feedback that's really helpful. Sure. No, I mean, we're, you know, yeah. we, we want to be accountable and transparent. That's yeah. one of our values. And I think if, we've, if we're reporting something is, you know, delayed, then you, you and the public have a right to know. You know, and it's we try to examine what's going on, so we're happy mm -hmm. to share that. That's no no problem at all. Okay. Great. Anything? So, do you feel like you have enough yes. information for next time? Okay. And do you think it's going to be back on the agenda for next for our next That's meeting? That's the plan. Okay. But there, it won't be the only thing. To right, have as opposed to tonight. tonight. Right. right. Okay. Anything else, folks, uh, want to? say about the strategic plan or the goals or any of the action items or anything at this point we'll have another opportunity to discuss it but yeah Donna go ahead I'm just glad to see that it's really stand it stood the test of time we really did good work so yeah. pat ourselves yeah. on the back <laughs> <laughs> yeah I agree great other other thoughts okay super thank you thank you um, and also, I just want to recognize that I, I, I want to recognize that it's a lot of work to just keep up to date with where all these different things, the, these different projects are, and it's it's really it's it's helpful to know where things stand. Um, so, I just want to thank uh, you know pass along our gratitude to folks that help put that together. So, yep. Yeah. Well, that's. Cool. That's why we update uh, that Invisio all the time, right, Kurt? It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Kurt's a big fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so it's 825. This is the end of uh, the regular business, so we could just do council reports and be done. Yeah, okay. Uh, that, is, that, is that all right? I think. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so council reports. Donna, are you up for going first? I do. I had a uh, request from Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice that the, they would like to, the council to consider them n to not 
have to gather signatures this year. The last two years, they were allowed not to have sig gather signatures and were put on the ballot, and it's passed. It's the same twenty. $3,500 that they would put on this year. And so I told uh, Kim Farnham, who was the development director there, that I would let the council know. And they're willing to come and present if the council would like to hear from them. But they would like to make that request and want to know what the council wants them to do, whether it's a written a request to be on the agenda or just a direct request not to be made to collect signatures in order to be on the ballot. So we put that on some time to talk about. Okay. Okay. And likewise, uh, there's lots of blood drawings happening from Red Cross. Uh, uh, there's one on Friday. There's one next week in City Hall, next week at the Chamber, uh, at the Central Vermont Hospital. So really, if you can give blood, do, because they really, really need it. And we all have gotten in the mail things from the League about the town fair, October 6th and 7th. I go... I've only missed a couple of them in all the time I've been in the council. It's really, really worthwhile. Uh, training, it's at Killington. Uh, I'm already signed up. I hope others will do. I don't know. It, we usually pick somebody to vote, be uh, authorized. Uh, so I don't know if we can do that without it being on the agenda. <laughs> um, we don't have another meeting before then, so if, if anyone mm -hmm. wants to nominate Donna or someone to be or if somebody else wants to go that's absolutely yeah, fine I'll, I'm going anyways I really recommend it Jennifer uh, Carey it's an excellent way to meet other select boards councils but you get such wonderful advice from people who've been in state government uh, city government municipal government it's really good yeah, Jack really go ahead bad. I really bad. I feel bad I can't be there this, this year because I was looking forward to it but I'll be out of town those those days, and so I can't. But I uh, nominate Donna to be our representation representative and to vote on our behalf. I'll second. For the discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you for that, but that's great. Okay. And, uh, back to and Bill. Hopefully, we'll say a little bit about this. Are you going to talk about the Department of Public Safety has uh, awarded? a tentative awarded a capital region through Montpelier $2.4 million for communication equipment. So that is wonderful. It has a few more stages to go through, and we still have some things they want refined in the application, but it's good news, basically. It's really good news. The, the main thing they took out was any administrative money, which is too bad, but it, the equipment is really solid. So I'm really pleased about that. I don't have to report. Okay. Okay. Uh, just one thing I've been hearing um, as a follow-up for the public engagement process for the Elks property. Uh, some folks are wondering if maybe we could do like just a series, pick a weekend or something, do a series of tours for the public to, just to get up and see the property. Kind of like, you know, put a picture to what they're oh. hearing in the press there. I, I think I could actually benefit from that again, you know, with some yeah. of the new stuff that's come up. So just something to maybe throw in White and Barks uh, plan there. That's it for me. And we're gonna, are we going to hear from them? We will next meeting, but I, will, I have an idea too. So. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Uh, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, Jack. I can pass tonight. Okay. Lauren. Uh, two quick things. Um, one, I just wanted to, it was great to see at the um, Energy Advisory Committee meeting um, that just recently happened. We had uh, Jim Murphy, the chair of the school board, come. And as uh, you all probably remember, the net zero plan that we had done looked at both the schools um, and the city operation. So it was great to see. And um, Tim Favorite, I believe, is mm -hmm. really leading the charge. So thanks to Tim for um, uh, helping bring these conversations together um, and get some updates from them and some kind of momentum on um, seeing that uh, good work put to use in the schools as well as with the city operations. So that was great. Um, and the only other thing was um, the Social and Economic Justice Committee was, um, we've been talking a lot about the community engagement and how to feed input or engage with the consultants. And it's not entirely clear to us how to effectively provide that input or if we can meet with them or whatever the, the right way to do it. So just putting it on your radar to, yeah, like the, um, there's a lot of interest and some good thinking. We want to make sure that 
that gets in there before we miss the <laughs> miss the window. Thanks. Great. Well, I, I just have a few things here. Um, this Saturday is the Prevent Child Abuse of Vermont Walk for Children. So that's at 9 a.m. starting at the State House Lawn. So um, it's a great uh, fundraiser for them, great event for them. So I uh, invite any, everybody to come out to that. I also want to recognize that this last weekend was the Montpelier Fall Festival, which benefits uh, the or benefited the uh, Montpelier Roxbury Public School District Partners in, in Education, uh, which is like the the boosters uh, group for uh, the school district, and it was a great event. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, super fun. So I wanted to just thank everybody who came out to that and all the organizers um, for pulling that off, making it happen, and everyone who uh, was willing to be a part of the dunk tank because that I did not <laughs> want to be a part of the dunk tank. Um, I also just want to call out one thing that we heard tonight, which I thought was really encouraging, um, that relative to, to benchmarked other cities, that, that Montpelier is doing really well in terms of engagement. Um, you know, that's something that I feel like we have worked really hard on. And uh, it's great to, I mean, of, of course, we can always be better, and we should aim to be better. But it's, it's great to see that um, just relative to other cities, we're doing well. So um, let's keep after it, but uh, wonderful. Very, very encouraged there. So, um, and that's it for, uh, for me. Anything from the clerk? Um, Clerk's office. <laughs> so nothing too important, but I do want to take this opportunity to just provide a few reminders to any members of the public listening in um, and present today um, about the upcoming election. Um, so the Secretary of State's office is mailing a general election ballot to every registered voter in Vermont, in case people don't know that. Um, new registrants and voters who change their address within Montpelier in the coming weeks can expect to automatically receive a um, uh, mail-in ballot as well from the city clerk's office. Once you receive your ballot, you can return it by mail with the included envelope. Drop it off at the ballot drop box behind City Hall or return it to us in person at the city clerk's office. If you choose to mail it, please keep in mind that ballots received after the date of the election cannot be counted, even if they were postmarked on or before election day. So just when you're preparing to mail your ballot, keep that uh, in mind. As always, you can vote in person in the City Hall Auditorium on Election Day, November the 8th, or at the City Clerk's Office any business day between now and then. If you choose to drop off your voted ballot on Election Day, please bring it upstairs to the auditorium to the polling place. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about the election, about your ballot, uh, please do not hesitate to call the Clerk's Office or visit us at City Hall. Great. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Bill. Okay, um, I mentioned Kelly's new position. I would also be remiss to not mention she's also gonna be doing some double duty uh, for the next few months uh, because we will be starting hiring uh, finance and a, a formal process for DPW. Also acknowledge that Kurt is here who is our interim public works director and certainly a strong candidate for the, the more permanent position. Um, so Kelly will be leading our budget process this year, even though she'll be in her new role. So uh, some of the work that the that may have been done in the past by the assistant manager may not be getting done at least for the next couple months because we, we can't kill her yet. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, so th th there's that happening. Uh, I was going to also note that the we are uh, very happy to receive 2.449 million toward our radio infrastructure. And uh, we understand that maybe a phased uh, approach. Some of it was, uh, you know, we'd asked for a 3.2 to 3.5 million. So we got the bulk of what we were looking for. And we have reason to believe we'll be competitive for the remaining funds next year. Uh, and the project can be phased, uh, was set up to be phased that way. So we're feeling really good about that. Um, our team here at Montpelier PD, Chief Pete, and uh, assist uh, Deputy Chief Allsworth from the Barry Fire Department really were the leaders. Uh, in putting that application together. So hats off to a um, real good piece of teamwork between the two cities. And, and of course, we couldn't have done it without Central Vermont Public Safety Authority who, uh, you know, provided the initial study and the, uh, you know, the, the resources with the consultant. So good teamwork all the way around. Um, 
already mentioned the City Hall illness. Uh, Elks Club, uh, so we have spoken with White and Burke as a, to follow up with the conversations we had at the last meeting, and they were very receptive to that. We, and uh, they wanted to be clear that, um, you know, the, the plan they had submitted was in addition to the plan that was already in their proposal. So, they, 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 you know, I think their point was they were sort of saying we want to do more but they still heard it and uh so they're actually scheduling and i i believe i have the date correct but i maybe i think it's october 15 they're actually going to do an on-site walk uh thing um so is that a saturday i think it's a saturday yes, yes whatever that saturday is uh so there will be an on-site event there um one thing that I and we're getting an article out evelyn actually is preparing an article to go out in the bridge and everything else about the process uh, and I think they really want to be emphasized is that they have to do a lot of the uh, ground analysis and now's the time of the year to do that because we can't spend a lot of time talking about let's put this here and there and there if there are certain sites that are wetlands and those kind of things so they they want to have a robust public process but they don't want to waste people's time so we're going to start doing some big picture thinking but really you know where they can engage the public in more meetings even when the weather's not as good but they can't do the field work. They have to do that now. So they've already started that work. So they, they are definitely on it. They're engaged. And uh, I think we'll be seeing a, a robust process, but certainly happy to connect uh, your folks if, if they, they're interested in that. So lots coming, lots of news on, on that project. Uh, and then just lastly, uh, Kelly and I <coughs> did attend the um, ICMA conference in Columbus, Ohio last week. I think um, we both got a lot out of it, including COVID. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, as did, uh, I don't know, I think it turned into a super spreader. Oh, but yeah. the speakers were great and uh, the sessions were really great. And I know, uh, you know, for me, it's seeing a, a lot of people, uh, connections from the years. And for Kelly, it was being overwhelmed by seeing all of my old connections from the years. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, hopefully she got to meet some new people in her own sets of resources. But uh, great, as always, appreciate the city's support in uh, allowing us to participate in those, those kinds of things. Um, so we, we will have some good ideas to bring back. Great. That's all I have. Super. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, so, well, and, and I will oh. say this about that. Sorry, that's no, okay. Um, the issues on our plate are the same issues that are on the plate everywhere: staffing, DEI, housing. Um, it's it's you know it's it's really fascinating talking to people. It's just really the same kind of um, issues everywhere: homelessness. Um, so we're not alone. We sometimes you know you feel like you're on an island here, but everybody's dealing with the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's also a great plug for the the conference, Vermont League of Cities and Towns conference, because even in Vermont, yeah, it's well, all yeah. the Absolutely. same too. Um, I'll be there. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, so, without objection, we uh, will adjourn 8:39 uh, this evening. So.